So I have a few animation tutorials on my channel already and I haven't really covered the basics of animations nor how do they work. So that's what this video is going to be about. But as usual, leave a like and subscribe to support the channel and also check out my Patreon page and let's get into the video. So to start off with animating, we basically need a character to make the animations on that we can create by going to the avatar tab and the rig builder. Now this is a tool that's automatically going to create a character for you and you have different presets to choose from. But I'm just going to select the RV and the block avatar and it's going to appear right here and now while being in the avatar tab we also need to open the animation editor this is what's going to allow us to actually create the animation change its settings as well as save it to studio so again we need to open it and here it's saying to select a rig to animate or create a new rig by selecting the rig builder under the avatar tab so this is the step that we just did so you can simply just press on this avatar now and we are going to have a new window saying create an animation to start and the animation name can be something like my animation so later on we can just press on create and you are going to see that we are going to have the timeline as well as the blue line that you can move this is the indicator on which frame the animation is currently on and another thing to indicate that we are creating an animation on the rig is this grid that appeared below it and now if it comes to different settings they're basically on the left side right here. So we currently have a rig animation and this is an option to enable the I key controls. And I made a tutorial on this, except it's not really for animations, but I'm basically just going to skip it since I only want to cover the basics. And then there is this plus that's saying to add a new animation track. And if I press on it, it's going to give me an option to select all of the body parts from this character. Now, if this was a skinned character, this would basically show bones instead of the body parts. That I recommend that you watch my video about custom character animations that I'm gonna link down in the description. But now there is the time of the animation where I can't really play it right now because we don't have any keyframes yet, but this is a time in seconds. If I change it to, for example, five, now the animation is going to be five seconds, but I'm going to leave it at one. Then we have the navigation options to move on the timeline. We can play the animation, it's also showing you the keybinds, where you can for example just press space to play it. But again, we don't really have anything now. Then you have an option to move to the next key and then move to the last frame, meaning the end of the animation. Then this button, what this one is for, is to toggle the looping of the animation, meaning that once it ends, it's going to start from the beginning frame again. And all of the controls basically go the same, except for the backwards direction. And now we are going to have these three dots, and what these are going to do are going to open a menu, where we can load an animation, save this one, where if I press on save, it saved the animation to my animations, which is going to be stored in the server storage, then the Roblox animation saves, then this rig, and then it's going to be right here. Then we can save this as either a new animation or the existing animation from this rig right here. Then we can also import one either from Roblox, meaning that we can select an animation from our inventory or from the RBX animations. And what the FBX animation is, FBX is a format that allows you to save 3D models as well as bake animations into them. So if you are for example in Blender, then have a rig model with some animations, you export it into an FBX file and you have an option to basically just bake the animations into the file. And this option to import from the FBX animation is there so you just don't have to import the whole model again for example, if you are exporting multiple animations from Blender. And then you have an option to publish this to Roblox, then the create new, which is just going to create a new animation. And something really important is the set animation priority. You have the core, which is the lowest priority. You have the idle, movement, and five different actions. And what this priority is, idle would be basically for an idle animation movement for the character walking or running, and action would be for them like, for example, just casting a fishing rod or whatever. But what the animation priority is, is let's just say from an example, you have the character running animation, as well as them, for example, dashing. If the dash animation has an action priority, let's say, and the running has a movement, the higher priority is going to override the animation, and that's going to be the animation that's going to currently play. But if the dashing has a lower priority than running, then it's not really going to be visible while performing the dash. And lastly, from this menu, you also have an option to optimize keyframes, which is just a tool that moves or deletes unnecessary keyframes. But again, we don't really have anything right now, but we are going to start animating in a second. But what I wanted to also show is that there is this little button right here. And these are the timeline settings, where you have the timeline unit, which if I, for example, just change to seconds, is going to change these seconds on the top right here. But I'm going to leave it on frames. And also it's currently set to be 30 FPS, 
meaning only 30 frames per second. But if I change it to, for example, 60, now I'm going to have a little bit more space to work with the animation. And increasing the frame rate per animation can make it more smooth and even more accurate. And you can even make 120 FPS animations as well as have a custom frame rate, but the maximum is going to be 120. But for this tutorial, I'm just going to leave it at 30 and just really quickly change the unit to be back to seconds and frames. Then you just have the playback speed, which is the speed in which the timeline is going to play the animation, then the grid speed, that sadly I'm not sure what it does. Then you have an option to show the animation events, where if you, for example, just right click anywhere, you can add an animation event here. And what this event also is, it's a signal that you can, for example, use in scripting and just code certain stuff whenever the certain moment of the animation happens, where I can add an event and call it Jules event with a parameter of maybe one. And now I'm going to have the event right here. And with this option, I can just hide them or unhide them. Then you have the stamp mode, which is set to keyframes, where this just means, well, the snapping of the indicator on the timeline, where with none, I am basically just able to smoothly move it. Then the default rotation type, which is something for the curve editor, and the default Euler's angle order, which again is going to be for the curve editor, which is actually going to be right here. And once I press on it, it says that this will copy the keyframe sequence and convert it to the new curve animation clip. But they cannot be converted back and and they also may not work with the third party studio plugins. So I'm not going to actually do this now, and lastly there is a filter for basically just searching the events. And that was basically a little bit to go over, but let me just actually make an animation. So basically just basically add the body parts by pressing on the plus and then selecting all the body parts. Now if I for example just press on one of them, and I actually need to press on one of the tools, I'm going to have an option to rotate right here, and if I press on the R button, it's going to change to move. And if I decide to do one of the actions, you can see that it created a keyframe right here. And also I forgot to remove the event, so I'm just going to do this. And you can see that this one is gray, meaning this is for a body part. And there is also a white one, which is going to be for the character. This one on top right here, not only indicates that there is a keyframe on this frame, but also if you had, for example, different body parts, moving like this, you are able to drag all of them by selecting the keyframe on the top instead of only one. But now you can also see that there is this gap in between the keyframes. I'm also just talking about the left upper arm where the starting position previously was a little bit different because it should be like this. And what this exactly is about is that, for example, if I remove this keyframe, you can see that this keyframe right here doesn't have any keyframes in front of it, meaning that it's going to register this one as basically the first action. So to prevent something like this, what I can, for example, just do is go to the start, basically just right click on the timeline and press an add keyframe here. But that's only going to do it for the left foot. So what I can do instead is delete this keyframe on the top, then again right click on the rig field and then just press on the add keyframe here. And now this is going to be the starting pose of basically the character. And now I can just freely move somewhere on the timeline and just start making some kind of a basically weird animation where I can make, for example, just the leg of this guy basically just fly away. And now I can also press the spacebar to basically just play the animation. And it looks like this. Now I'm also going to disable looping just to show it again. And I can also do that for all of the different body parts, like for example even the head. So it's going to look like this. But you can basically see that every time I move on the timeline, and then for example move a body part, it's automatically going to add a keyframe and start creating the animation. So that's going to be all of these basics. And now let me just talk about the frame keyframe settings. So once you're right here on a keyframe, you're going to have the easing style and the easing direction. And these easing styles, they're basically the same thing that you would see in Twins, except they're going to work on animations. So if I select all of these, set the easing style to be constant, then play the animation, you can see that we're going to have a choppy animation like this. And that's because the constant means that the animation normally is going to distribute the time between the keyframes to transfer from one keyframe to another, there, but the constant as you can see is not going to do that. But these are basically going to be the different easing styles that you would need to learn or just mess around with. You can even have some of the keyframes have different easing styles, but it's basically just going to a little bit weird. Where another example can be like, if I make this guy rotate like this, 
and to change the keyframe styles and play the animation is not really going to be the best. But anyways, we also have the easing direction and again this is going to work like in twins where in means that it's going to be forwarded, out means that it's going to go backwards and in and out is going to go forward then go back, if well that makes sense. So if I change this one to out then this one to in and out then this one to out again, it's going to be basically even worse. And also let's see to set the priority of the animation, we can just go again to these three dots, then select set animation priority and let's leave it as movement. You basically also need to remember to do that, because sometimes you might not see the animation basically play. But let's finally go to the curve editor, so I can press on confirm now, and it's going to add this new timeline. And now on the curve editor you can basically just see this grid, where you are going to have the time again on the top, and rotational and positional values. Where if I go to one of the body parts, like this one for example, that has the animations, you can see that it's going to be a little bit easier to see basically the easing style right here, which at the beginning is set to the cubic mode, same with all of these ones, where you can for example also even rotate it. Where if I for example just modify this curve, it's basically just going to modify these values. Basically just overshoot the position. And now the linear one is going to basically just keep it linear until the next frame of the animation. Where if I for example select the starting keyframe and basically just expand it like this, it well no longer is going to be linear. And maybe I should actually show this on a less chaotic example. Where I'm going to have a different avatar, which this one is going to play this, well, jump. And this right here, this is the previously mentioned bone. Since this is not a basic Roblox avatar, this one is actually a skinned model. But I'm just going to select one of the parts and go back to the curve editor. So right now I have the next selected because it's basically the most simple one where if I just go to the view, it only has one keyframe at the start and one in the middle. Where you can basically see it on this frame right here that this is just making the cut look a little bit higher. But basically on the curve editor, you can see that this is going down and then so we're going back to the original position. So with this linear mode, I could basically change the path to maybe go a little bit smoother where if I play it now, then go back to this keyframe, just make it a little bit more easier to see and press the spacebar now you can see the effect right here but if I go to the curve editor and I just modify this you can see that it's going to basically just move the head really low because of me modifying this curve and then just basically go back. I also have another keyframe in the center right here and what this one is going to do if I drag it it allows me to basically just add another animation keyframe except this one is going to operate on the curves and I can even move it to the end of the timeline. And same goes for another positional one right here, as well as these different two. So you have one rotation, then one movement, another movement one, another rotation one, then another movement, and then these three basically just being a rotational values. So yeah, I can have basically too much fun with this where now the cut model is basically just going to break. But yeah, I basically just never used this, but I hope I explained it well. Also, I'm not really going to cover how to save the animation played on a character and etc, because I already did that in my previous videos. That again, I recommend you watch. But yeah, that's basically going to be everything for today. So again, if you like to support the channel, also check out my Patreon page. And thank you for watching, hope everyone had a nice day and see you guys.